listen, it has not been a good year for New York City Mayor Eric Adams, right? Ball headed black dude, milk the head. We talked about him one time before. I've been meaning to talk about him because so much shit was going on. But, you know, real life began the way. I don't have time to be sitting and, and re- making videos back to back to back. I'm trying to make more time. Though. I just started a new job. Um, and, you know, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to make time. So, to catch y'all up, Eric Adams has faced a lot of <laughs> issues, okay? From one of his campaign people getting uh, raided by the FBI to him getting his phone and, and technology confiscated by uh, by the FBI with him seemingly being under, you know, they're, they're watching his ass, but they're watching his ass. To people turning on him about the... Turning on him over the illegal immigrant situation going on in New York where thousands of migrants are going over there and they're on the street. They're trying to trying to have jobs. They're trying to pretty much be treated like American citizens um, when you, they didn't even come here the correct way. Um, coming in on boatloads of buses from Texas. I think it was like 25 buses per day at some point, right? Crazy shit been going on. Even Cardi B, the one female rapper who Democrats like to use, even she was talking about like, yo, what what they got going on is crazy. She was saying, because right now, budget cuts have been going on for city services like sanitation workers and budget cuts going on from schools in order to try to pay for (laughs) all these illegal immigrants in the city, right? To the point where Eric Adams is in D.C., begging the Joe Biden's people for some money and also blaming them for the situation to begin with. But at the same time, it's his fault because people like him, people like uh, Brandon Johnson, were talking about, oh, my city, yeah, we're a sanctuary city. Sanctuary city, come here, bring all your immigrants here. And now they're here and you don't know what to do. Monkey, if you just listen when people told you it was a bad idea, this wouldn't be in the situation they're in. And now people in New York that live there are kind of suffering (laughs) even more. It's crazy shit, bro, crazy shit. So like I said... Budget cuts, boom. I saw a black conservative perspective, Greg. He said that uh, he kind of had a theory, a conspiracy theory, where it's like, you know, maybe the FBI is cracking down on him now that he's been speaking out against Joe Biden, right? He's been speaking speaking out against his Democrat masters, okay? I don't know. But it's very plausible because now, you know, as soon as he starts complaining about the issue going on, instead of just shutting up like Brandon Johnson shutting up, the FBI is on him. Oh, there was like a, a, a Me Too accusation against him. Um, you know, it's very strange, very strange. But now, look at this story I just seen. New York police officers quit in mass exodus. A new report in the New York Post finds a record number of NYPD officers resigning this year, with more than 200 officers already tapping out in the first two months of this year. Fox 5's Ashley Rodriguez mm. asked the mayor about the exodus. Public Mm. safety is a prerequisite to our prosperity. Yet public safety's first line of defense in the city, its police officers, are resigning at a record level in 2023, according to a new report from the New York Post, which found 239 officers quit this year, a 117% increase compared to the same period over the last two years, the highest number of resignations since 2007. Last year, the NYPD saw just over 3,700 officers resign retire the most since 9-11 we have a law enforcement crisis damn in this, uh, in this, uh, in this country and it's serious several months later workers making it known that yeah that's the beginning not happy with the mayor's budget cuts no department was spared not even the nypd which will now have the lowest number of employees in decades fox times antoine lewis joins us now in the studio with a look at those cuts and which are the most upsetting antoine uh it's natasha police fire department of sanitation even library services so it just depends upon the person the mayor warned in advance that the cuts were mm. coming and they're hurting a little bit more than most were expecting A mix of frustrated New Yorkers and elected officials found common look at that, look at that, look at that. demonstrating inside of City Hall Park in protest of news coming out of City Hall. During these tough times, we should not be balancing the budget on the backs of the poorest New Yorkers. The Care Not Cuts rally was in direct response to the budget cuts announced by the Adams administration earlier this week. 5% across the board, totaling upwards of $4 billion, impacting every city agency, including public safety. To that end, the cuts will mean the NYPD having less than 30,000 employees for the first time in decades. And the next five classes of new officers would be postponed. So you see that, right? This is what people was talking about when they were saying, if you let all these people in, 
right? And then try to try to make room for them. There's not gonna be room for them. The especially a big ass like New York. There's already there's already issues going on in New York that I'm not all the way privy to because I don't live there. But there's definitely issues already there where people try to find funding to begin with for a lot of different programs and a lot of different uh a lot of different areas, okay, when it comes to funding for the education system for schools, when it comes for, you know, local sanitation workers, police, firefighters, they already have their enough issues trying to make budget, okay? And but now because Eric Adams for some reason wanted to say, Oh yeah, bring them all here, bring them all here and Biden and them people was letting all these motherfuckers cross the border with no you when with, with bro, come on bro. Now look, people are suffering. This is the suffering that people was talking about. This is the suffering that people was talking about. New York citizens, American citizens, New York residents are suffering now because Eric Adams wants to take their money to try to make make <laughs> like it's so dumb. I saw a story I think last week where a facility that they that they built and arranged for a lot of the migrants, uh, they were choosing not to stay there because it was too far. It was too far for them. They didn't like it. So it's like, bro, what what can you do? What can you do? You're not even supposed to be here. That's the thing. You're not supposed to be here. And you know, the, the when it comes to the immigrant conversation or argument, illegal immigrant argument, first of all, right? Because a lot of people, especially liberals or Democrats. They try to make it seem like, oh, you hate immigrants. You hate immigrants. Look, Republicans, these racist white people, they hate immigrants. And it's like, bro, no, dude. Are you stupid? People have a problem with people who are not supposed to be here or didn't get here the right way. Because now how do you make room? How do you make that? You can't adjust shit because things run how they are for a reason. And people are already struggling. So what, what are you going to do when you add thousands, hundreds of thousands? Maybe millions more people to that. You're going to get struggle. You're going to get problems. But they try to, instead of focusing on the actual issues, they want to make it seem like you hate people. You hate Mexicans. You hate whatever. Like, bro, cut it out. Cut it out. Because now look. And now they're protesting. <laughs> but like, I'm, you know, like, come on, bro. Come on. Yeah, I remember someone in, in the comments of one of my videos, I think talking about DeSantis was trying to be like, oh, look, DeSantis is so terrible. Look what he's done. He bust all the people to Mary, Maria's vineyard or whatever. I'm like, okay. Uh, then the people with somebody want all the immigrants over there, <laughs> the illegal immigrants over there. All right. <laughs> there you go. He sent them over there. He sent them where they were welcomed. What's the problem? Mayor Adams unveils his first round of budget cuts and has promised the cuts are painful. The 5% cuts across... The board will Sorry, my laptop acting weird. I don't know why the mouse isn't disappearing. Will affect every agency, sanitation programs, and school budgets. But the most dramatic effect will be on public safety. Think about that. <laughs> Budget cuts from sanitation. New York. I've been in New York one time. New York is very dirty. Okay, there's a lot of trash on the floor. There's rats, big ass rats, the size of dogs running around. And you tell me you're gonna cut the budget from the people that try to clean it up? That's insane. So for for what though? And it's this is what it comes back to. For what purpose? Look at the purpose for what this this money's getting cut for. For people that are not even supposed to be here. That's, that's what's so crazy about this shit, bro. Safety and the police department. CBS two political reporter Marsha Kramer here now to break this part down. Marsha. Christina Maurice, Mayor Adams, former NYPD Captain Eric Adams, was elected in part on his promise to cut crime and make the streets safe again. So it's ironic that while every agency is taking a hit, these cuts will drop the number of cops patrolling the streets, now get this, to the lowest number since the 1990s. I want you to think about that. Now, you already seen before, I don't, I don't think I made any videos covering them, but I've, I've referenced them though. You've seen before how in places like Chicago, places like L.A., people have been doing like some organized retail theft. They've been running in stores and looting, right? Just running in stores and grabbing grabbing and dashing. Some of them not even running away because they can't do shit. What are the police going to do? There's laws against them. Now, you can't touch them. It's not a felony unless you steal something that's over $999 somewhere. I think, that was, I think that's California. So now if you tell me that in New York, the 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 amount of police that they have is going down. You don't think that stuff is going to happen even worse now? You don't think people are going to start looting New York? I'm I'm not sure if they're already doing that massive like massive crime spree shit in New York, but they're definitely going to try to now, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And it's only going to hurt the people that live in those areas, bro. 
Because just like the people that try to steal from CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, they steal enough, them companies going to pull their stores out of there. I remember when I was in Atlanta, and I think I told this before, where I was with a friend, and she was showing me how, like, oh, she used to go to this Walmart all the time because it's so close to where she lived. But now she had to try, drive, like, 20, 25 minutes to go to, like, the nearest market to get food because motherfuckers kept stealing from Walmart, and they set an aisle they set it on fire they set an aisle on fire as a distraction so they could steal some tvs and walmart was like fuck no closed <laughs> but now they re- actually reopened it um like maybe think a couple weeks ago but now there's like a police department inside the walmart crazy crazy shit bro crazy but you know when you talk about it and say it's a bad thing that people are stealing right don't the bible say thou shalt not steal it's a bad thing when people are stealing, but you got motherfuckers like Hassan Piker who be like, oh, you know, they're just stealing to feed their families. They're stealing to take care of their kids. They can't feed their kids. They're, they're stealing these things, these goods, these TVs, so they can sell it and redistribute it to their community and help the community. Shut the fuck up. And then you get situations like that pregnant girl who was stealing liquor with her friends and then got shot when she tried to run over the police. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Bro, let's keep going, bro. Ate the streets safe again. So it's ironic that while every agency is taking a hit, these cuts will drop the number of cops patrolling. The- this is the most painful exercise I've ever done in my professional life. A frank admission from Mayor Adams as he hosted a town hall for older adults at the Hudson Guild. It came minutes after his budget director admitted in a briefing that the need for belt tightening to deal with the $7 billion budget gap caused in part by the migrant crisis and by the reduction in federal aid for COVID would force the city to stop hiring cops for the foreseeable future. Future. The budget director said the next five classes at the police academy will be canceled. Yikes. The number of cops expected to drop from 33,541 to about 29,000 in the fiscal year that starts next July. He said that's the lowest number of cops since the 1990s. Police Benevolent Association President Patrick Hendry was stunned, saying the cuts could kill 30 years of public safety progress, telling CBS2 in a statement, quote, this is truly a disaster for every New Yorker who cares about safe streets. Cops are already stretched to our breaking point, and these cuts will return us to staffing levels we haven't seen since the crime epidemic of the 80s and 90s. Mm. We cannot go back there. The number of cops, cops quitting before they reach the 20 years required to receive the full pensions will skyrocket from 509 in 2020 to 1,040 so far this year. A 104% increase. So, you know, when you get a pension, you good. You're living, you straight. So people are quitting before they can even get their pension. That's how bad it is. They're quitting before they can even get their pension. All the years of departures and lack of replacements are now taking a toll, forcing the cops who remain on the job to work inhumane amounts of forced overtime. So not enough cops... Cops are being forced to work overtime. And when you're in a field where you have to deal with people and protect people's safety, whether you're a cop or you're in the mental health field or you're in the medical field, if you're working too much, bro, that shit is not good for you because it's draining. It's draining. Whether it's from exhausting people, people that's trying to attack you, all the mountains of paperwork you got to do, and especially in a city like New York, bro, who's trying to do that, bro? And so when you get people, and that's how you get more, you know, actual like incidents that become like big social justice incidents, right? Let's say a cop shoots, you can see a headline, cop shoots unarmed black man. Or half time, no one got to be unarmed, right? But they're going to try to make it a big deal regardless. And it's like, bro, when you have, don't have enough police and you got police that's forced to work overtime because people are acting crazy and there's not enough employees, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? You're going to get people who get sloppy, people who get, you know, who are just tired, people who are exhausted. It's not good, bro. It's not good. Because you got to think about a lot of people who aren't police and don't don't ever think about what they got to do. They get called for a lot of different things, whether it be car accidents, whether it be domestic issues, like it could be little petty stuff they get called for, actually big issues that they get called for. It's not just crimes, not just people getting hurt. It's, it's just it's just taxing. It's very taxing on the mental. The workload is a leading factor driving people away from the job. If the NYPD is going to survive these staffing reductions, it cannot just keep squeezing cops for more hours. The union has proposed a flexible schedule that would would have cops working longer hours on fewer days. Incredibly, 21 cops walked away from the job earlier this year in just a two-day period. February 20th and 21st. Huh. Two days before my birthday. To join the MTA, police sources said. Even, what's MTA? 
Even former NYPD Commissioner Keisha Sewell stepped down in June amid a steady stream of New York fighters beating her to the punch. Officers typically work 20 years or more to collect the full pension, which can create the 50% of their final average salary. One police officer who asked to remain anonymous for fear of retribution told the post he plans to leave this the job this summer when he hits 20 years. I keep in contact with the guys that I was in the academy with, and we all have the same notion. Damn. Instead of his 20, 2004 class of 2,400, I think maybe nine, 95% of us are planning on leaving. Damn, the veteran cops, bro, they out of here. They're not going for it, bro. The weary officer said the workload at the Willowdown NYPD is already crushing cops, and things will decline further now that the city put the kibosh on the next five police academy classes. The drastic cuts will reduce the department to just 29,000 cops by the end of the fiscal year. The lowest, yeah, so we knew that. As a 45-year-old, he said he's having a difficult time keeping up with the same punishing hours he worked when he was younger. We've been working on average about 13 to 14 hours a day with a lot of protests happening in the city. Enough is enough. I'll have maybe one day off for the week, and I'm so tired from work, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, because you got to think, this is not just a job where you're sitting around not doing shit, okay? This is a job where you're active. You're driving around. You got to be observant. You got to be ready. You know, you might get hurt. People don't like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not to be like, to be a bootlicker for the police, but... It is what it is. A cop's job is to help people, even if it's technically not their job, because um, there was like a, a, a case. I forgot what the name of the case was, where it's like technically police job is to protect property, not protect people. Um, but overall, you know, if something happens to you, something bad. You're going to call the police. OK, somebody's hurt. You're calling the police. You have some fire. You're calling the police. Someone's attacking you, trying to rob you. You're calling the police. So it is what it is. And generally, there are good people that become cops because they want to help people. They want to patrol. You know what I'm saying? They want to make sure shit don't happen. Also, they want to get paid. But, you know, that goes for anything. Um, but, you know, it, it, it is a tough thing, bro. It is a tough thing if there's not enough police officers. If there's not enough cops, not enough 12, a lot more bad shit is able to happen. And I remember I seen a video where I think FD Signifier, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I finished it. But he was saying how, oh, that's a myth. More cops equals less crime. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it's not making people feel any safer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Remember when, um, remember when, when Kai Sinet was trying to do that, give Kai Sinet was trying to do that giveaway, the PS5 giveaway and all them kids and, and young people was running around wild, bro. And they beat up that old dude that sells snacks on the streets and they stole his snacks and beat him up. You know, that didn't make him feel safe. It, how, how would he feel if there's even less police? That was going to try to catch them people, bro. Imagine a riot, a riot like that, and there's even less police. It's already hard enough to contain them. A 20-year-old Queens cop under an anonymity said that his job is unbearable now. He's looking to leave sooner rather than later. A former Miami SWAT team officer who helps recruit and relocate New York City cops to greener pastures told the Post he's busier than ever. It moved 60 officers in the last two years. The cops who left can't believe they ever worked there. Damn, bro. He said the ex-cops tell him that they're afraid to make arrests because of the anti-cop climate in the Big Apple. And when they do make a call, it's what's the point? And we're shoveling shit against the tide because the bad guys are right back out on the street. Ooh, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You know, and it's a, it's a trend that you see, right? You see people hate police, hate the people that's supposed to... So you see people that hate the police, but they love the criminal, right? They love the criminal. They hate the police, but love the criminal. They see the criminal as a virtue champion fighting against an oppressed system that was never fair. And the police are just the oppressor, okay? It's that communist Marxist mindset of the oppressed versus the oppressor. And police and anything that the oppressed does is justified because they are oppressed. There's an oppressor against them that forced them to act this way, that forced them to go rob somebody grandma on the street, that forced them to go rob a liquor store and get drunk. Is that type of mindset is that's fueling a lot of these Democrats? That's why they go for lax policies when it comes to criminal cases, right? Because they told them that you know America's prison system is overpopulated, and you know they're they're all racist, and they're trying to get, capture black people and put them in jail, capture black men, put them in jail for no reason. I agree, prison is not a solution for these problems, right? I agree, prison is not a solution for crime. Uh, from what I think, this is what I think, right? 
But again, it's what we got. And if there's people that are repeat offenders that are doing heinous things, they got to be locked up. Not and not and two things can be done at once. You can still lock people up while also trying to work on better solutions for people so they don't even end up in a position in the first place, right? To help them make better choices. I agree with that. Okay, I agree with the re- rehabilitation. I agree with trying to stop people from doing what they do, but also that don't mean let them right back out so they can do the same shit again. And I and I mainly mean that for like a lot of violent offenders and stuff, and people that hurt people, people that victimize people. Okay, I think that takes higher priority. Than people stealing, even though people stealing is still bad and they should still get locked up because at the end of the day, they still hurt people because, like I said earlier, all these motherfuckers stealing, making these businesses that people need, get out the city, close down, shut down. It's not good. So, you know, it's, it's, mm -mm. the exits began with Minnesota cop Derek Chauvin. Okay, yeah, George Floyd, all the protests. Assaults against NYPD have skyrocketed by more than 25%. Sheesh. When you look at the number of resignations, you need to ask yourself, why would the mayor even consider making cuts to hiring? Phew. Former police commission, Key Chan Sewell. Oh, it was a black lady. Wow. Why her eyes really like she was crying? Dang, left suddenly doing without giving a reason. Dang, boy. So, I mean, there you have it, bro. And all of this stem, a lot of this stems from Eric Adams. A lot of this stems from the Biden administration and the crisis at the border. Look how it trickles down and affects American citizens. It affects regular people. It affects education. It affects the police. It affects the fire department. It affects all these people. For what? That's the thing. For what? For political points? You know, my conspiracy is that they want to let a lot of these illegal immigrants get here and allow them certain rights like voting so they can become the new voting block that they pander towards, right? So they're not only going to just pander towards black people, they can pander to a bigger group, a bigger group of immigrants. It is what it is. Because if you're an immigrant, if you're an illegal immigrant, if you're someone that's from another country and your country is in terrible condition, poor condition, you have a family, you want to be able to take care of your family, America seems like this shining golden outpost. They're letting everybody in. I can get in. I just got to, you know, make a deal with the cartel. They're going to bring me up there. I work. I send them money. I, you know, I'm going to have to do some some illegal stuff over there, like sell drugs, rob and steal. And, you know, but I get to, you know, but obviously that's not everybody. But I get to have a good life for my family and try to make a good life for my family in New York. If you're somewhere or New York, whatever city, Chicago, whatever. That's the deal. You're going to take that deal. You're not going to give a fuck what America's got going on because that's not your job to care. (laughs) You're not going to care. That's why the fault is not really with those people. The fault is with the people in charge because they're allowing this shit to happen. They see that the border is loose. It's loose. It's loose. It's loose. So they can just go through like it's nothing. They can just lose. They can just go through. If they made it secure, if they tightened the security, they tightened the border, and people seen that they could not get through for real, they're going to stop trying to come because they can't get through. You know what I'm saying? There's so many other issues going on, bro. Drugs are flowing in through there. Potential terrorists are flowing through there. You know, look it up. There's definitely, there's, I think, like 100 some people that FBI arrested for suspected something. Um, we're ties to something. I don't remember the details, but I remember something. I'm going to look into it. I might do a video about it so I can find that article again. Um, and there's so much problems that trickle down to us regular people, <sighs> regular c- citizens of America, right? And, you know, they got to do somebody, bro. But, hey, you get what you vote for, I guess. But, hey, bro, it, it's, it's, it's an issue. And this type of stuff is what might make, you know, Biden, what's going to make Biden not have a chance when it comes to running for president. They're not going to let him run, bro. He's not going to run, run, bro. He can't. He can't run. There's no way. Yeah. But hey man, that's the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Shout out Greg Foreman. Uh, make sure you comment, subscribe, share, hit the location bell, and join the Discord. Links in the description box. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.